Welcome to another edition of the Trick Lessons Podcast, made for tricks, by a trick. This is your host, the number one trick on the internet, Sir Tricks a lot. Make sure you like and share this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell. This episode should serve as a warning to the Trick Squad for tricking safety. In this episode, we're going to go over reasons that a trick shouldn't do alcohols with a provider. To those who don't know, an alcohol is when a female provider comes over your location, whether it be a house, hotel, or an apartment. General privacy. This sounds petty, but it's really important. No matter what neighborhood you live in, there's always some nosy people snooping around to see what you're doing. And they may be friendly, but no matter who they are, you should never want anyone to look into your personal life. The worst case scenario is someone who's diligent enough to find out you're seeing providers. These people will inevitably gossip to other neighbors about you. While some neighbors won't care, other neighbors will form an opinion about you. And this could affect your relations and standing in the neighborhood. It's like I said in an earlier podcast, people somehow associate men using female providers with being a sexual predator. And you don't want neighbors who may think that way to assume the same about you. Another scenario that could result from a neighbor knowing your trick patterns is an increased law enforcement presence in your area. When people see providers, they assume drugs and crime will follow, so they report it. And they may even name drop you to the cops. The last thing you want is cops knowing that you're the neighborhood trick and they know your address. One thing I haven't mentioned is how cops love to bust tricks. There's a financial and political motive behind it, but that's a subject for another video. Overall, general privacy is about keeping your trick life and real life separate. Don't get your meat where you get your bread. When you allow a provider in your house, you allow her a look into your world. The more she comes over, the more she gets to observe and learn your weaknesses. I've seen it for myself. The first thing providers did when they came over my house was they looked around and they asked me questions. That's their way of trying to look for an opening. Also, when you're not using your real name, they're looking for indicators of your real identity to go along with your address. And that's just not an ideal situation you want to be in. Avoiding theft. When you invite a provider over your house, you instantly put your personal belongings at risk. I've heard stories about guys who invited female providers over their house just to get fleeced out of thousands of dollars, credit cards, iPads, anything you can think of. I don't invite providers over my place anymore, but when I did, I made sure I never turned my back on them or let them stay in a room alone. Not even the bathroom. Yup, that's right. I kept that bathroom door open. I don't give a damn if it is only soap or toilet tissue that gets stolen. It's my damn soap and toilet tissue, but I digress. Also, when I did allow providers over my house, they were vetted beforehand through in-call sessions. But that's flawed. Just because she's trustworthy in her own space doesn't make her trustworthy around your stuff. Overall, you just never know who you're allowing around your prized possessions. Keep your stuff safe by not allowing her over your place. Avoiding burglary. According to what I've read in forums and stories in the news, burglaries after inviting a female provider is not that outlandish. As I mentioned in the general privacy point, she can use her visit over your house as a way to case the spot. She can examine what you have of value and get an idea of your schedule by asking questions about what you do for work. After that, all it takes is for you to be gone and her Tyrone to break in and take everything. If you're allowing a provider over your place, be sure to have renter's insurance and a safe. Or better yet, never allow her in your place to begin with. Avoiding a home invasion. 
Home invasions are relatively uncommon. And to be clear, a home invasion has never happened to me in my 10 years of tricking. But when it comes to the trick game, we should always use Murphy's Law. Anything that can go wrong will go wrong. It's possible that a female provider could stage a home invasion. In this situation, a trick can open its door thinking the provider is the only person outside. And then out of nowhere, a Tyrone is pointing a gun at him and taking all of his personal belongings. And let's say the trick decides to call the police. What is he going to tell them? I was tricking and got robbed? And let's say the cops do take a report on the home invasion. Most investigations never result in people getting their property back. Avoid getting Johnny Allen. Although it's an extreme anomaly, all tricks need to know the story of Johnny Allen. In 2004, Johnny Allen met a provider named Centoya Brown at a Sonics in Nashville, Tennessee. At the time, he was 43 and she was 16. But unless she told him, which she didn't, he had no way of knowing she was underaged. Regardless, Allen bought himself food and bought her some food as well. And after negotiating a price, they agreed to go back to his place. After eating their food at Johnny's place, Johnny invited Centoya to his room to get his services. When they got to his room, Brown refused to give services and Johnny Allen decided to go to sleep. When he laid down, he was face opposite of Brown with his hands under his face in a resting position. It was at this point that Centoya Brown decided to pull out a handgun and shoot Johnny Allen in the back of the head, instantly killing him. She took his cash, guns, and stole the truck that he picked her up in. She confessed murder numerous times. She told a 911 operator. She told the police when she was being interrogated. And then she also told her relative who she was talking on the phone with that she murdered Johnny Allen. She was rightfully sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 51 years. But after a misinformation campaign, and fake public outrage from celebrities, Centoya Brown was granted clemency by the governor of Tennessee and will be released on August of 2019. The moral of this story is simple. Don't ever allow a provider in your living space. Had Johnny Allen not allowed Centoya Brown in his house, he would still be alive today. Fellas, don't be stupid and get Johnny Allen. For now, that's going to wrap up the Trick Lessons podcast. This has been the number one trick on the internet, so tricks a lot. Trick Lessons podcast is made for tricks by tricks. Make sure you follow me on blackavenger.tv. I can also be found at gab.ai. And remember, if you ain't paying, you ain't trying.